Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Path to Profit podcast. If you're joining me for the first time, my name is Bobby, and we are going to be breaking down Mercado Libre. We're talking about the technicals, the fundamentals, and much, much more. But you know where I see the stock as it sits right now. So without further ado, it's time for the chart breakdown. All right. As always, time stands in the description if you would like to jump around. But let's talk real quick, as I like to always, about Mercado Libre. What do they do as a company? So a lot of people refer to them as the Latin America uh, Amazon. I think that's somewhat accurate, but a little off. They are an Argentinian e-commerce company. That is the kind of broad play, broad way to kind of classify um, them. And they are a massive, an absolute giant in Latin America. They are within the top five in terms of market cap of Latin American companies. Massive. But I think they're a little more like an Alibaba than they are an Amazon because of how many different kind of factions of their company that there is. So they do have the e-commerce side, just like Amazon. Absolutely. They also have the fintech side or their their payment platform um, that they have. They also have logistics, shipping, things like that. Um, They have a Shopify for Latin America um, type company. If you know what Shopify does, they have something very similar, but down in Latin America, Uh, they have an advertising branch and they even have a credit branch. So there's just a ton of different kind of factions within this company, making them, in my eyes, much more like an Alibaba than just like an Amazon. Again, you can argue either way, but just let understand that they definitely have a lot of different aspects to their company. Uh, but with that being said, let's jump over to Market Smith and look at the fundamentals. <clears throat> All right, composite rating 99 on composite rating, amazing, excellent, best of the best. Uh, EPS rating though, 74. We like to see normally on the 80s and up as can some traders, but 74, it's not horrible. And we'll talk a little bit about why that is. So looking at the earnings on a quarterly basis, you could see the hashtag here. So it was 457%, triple digits, but that was compared to a negative quarter. You could see this quarter right here. Um, you could see 33 last quarter, 77 the quarter before that. Again, compared to a negative quarter. So it's just a little choppy when it comes to just what you're looking at on the earnings side. You can even see when you look at things on a yearly basis, you can see you're positive, negative, even more negative, slightly negative, positive, positive. Uh, Estimates saying that they're going to continue to go positive. So estimates are saying that things are starting to turn around. The trends showing that things are starting to turn around. We might be continuing to stay in some grow in a growing phase, um, but still, stock has to continue to prove itself. Um, the group uh, retail internet twenty eight out of one hundred ninety seven, so in the top forty, which is kind of the minimum that I look for, and um, it's just good to see retail internet. These type of companies do tend to do well when growth stocks start to do well, so just keep an eye on that group. Um, what else? Funds. We see growth in funds. Very, very positive there. And uh, we'll take a look at my checklist. Hitting pretty much everything else in the checklist. Again, just failing in that EPS range, which we already talked about. Here you can see tons of IBD mutual funds in there, which is very positive, and the mutual fund, uh, the fund growth in there. And you can see number one in composite rating in this out of the 58 stocks in this group. 5RS, 4 accumulation distribution, 2 in uh, SMR. So uh, it's really just the EPS that is the laggard in this actual stock. Um, so overall, seeing a lot, a lot of positives. Let's look at the weekly chart, see what we're seeing there. So we kind of have this like base on base. We had this consolidation period, uh, stage one. We had this big pullback, consolidated and formed this kind of base, broke out, and then... Market kind of got hit, started to pull back as the market got hit over these past probably couple of weeks, um, forming another flat base right there. And that base is five weeks in length, 13% depth with a pivot of $1,258. Um, 
We've got 95 RS. You can see the RS line overall trending higher. And over these past couple of weeks, starting to trend higher, which is a very, very positive sign. So you can see that there is, and I had talked about this. If you haven't, check out, there's an Airbnb video out this week. We talked about overhead resistance. This is another one of those stocks that has some overhead resistance. But the difference with this one is that we've been trending up for a decent amount of time. So it gives me a little less concern that we've already seen a substantial run up. Um, you can see 2022, right in the middle of June 2022, we've been kind of trending higher since then. So this makes me feel a little bit better than where the Airbnb, it's more been in the last couple of months that it's been turning around. Let's jump over to daily, take a look at what we see here. So again, it's not triggering the pattern recognition here, but this is that smaller little base over the last couple of weeks. Here's your bigger base. Um, you can see that we broke out, pulled back, turned around again. And the thing that always stands out to me here is looking at the blue well overrides the red. You can see there's definitely more upside volume than downside volume. You can see in this kind of pullback besides this one day right here, which actually ended up closing near the highs, it kind of pulled back and then closed higher. Um, volume really, really drying up on that pullback, which is a positive sign. Um, RS line really starting to turn around. You can see the uh, earnings reaction was very, very positive. The moving averages all trending upwards. Just all positive signs in terms of the technicals of what we're looking at here. So this one I think is fairly simple. <clears throat> it's easier to look at it really on the um, weekly chart. Break out of this flat base is what you're looking for. Break out of that flat base gives you the opportunity to get in there. And um, it's just um, one of those areas too where I would even just keep an eye right here on the low. I would draw like kind of a line right here. That definitely is going to be your, uh, your line in the sand, but you really shouldn't let it get any deeper. I mean, that would be a 13% loss. So you really don't even want to get it to that. But um, it's been trading fairly tight, which is good. So look, if you want to buy this as the base breakout, I think this is, this is definitely a stock that is viable uh, to make a purchase in, really hitting almost everything that you look for in a stock. And like I said, the only concern is just the somewhat good amount of overhead resistance. But like I said, we've been, we've been on the upside for a while, so not too concerning when compared to something like an Airbnb. Um, other than that, that's really all I got. If you got any questions or comments on this one, agree or disagree with anything I've said, please reach out to me. Let me know. Um, and that's what we got for this week. Enjoy this video. Subscribe, turn on notifications. Do this and many others every single week. Top right hand corner, got the rapid review, market review. Bottom right hand corner, some more chart breakdowns. Did two others this week Broadcom, like I just talked about, Airbnb. So you want to check those out. Bottom right hand corner, click that and see those. Other than that, that's all I got. Stay disciplined.